can't it's wait a, to see what we're going to yes. put in the bed today, you know, right? look, we did Dusty Miller and, and uh, Violas this mm -hmm. year. So what do you uh, think? I say did they do the okay? Dusty Miller did good. I think I the think Violas, so. not so good. Not so good. So, but you know, we have done a segment where we've kept the Dusty Miller for several yes, we have. seasons. And we're not doing that this time. <laughs> um, so we need to dig it up. And it's so nice that we're just going, going to put it in some different place. Okay. So we're going to transplant we're it gonna somewhere transplant else, huh? it, But you know something? Dusty Miller are biannuals. And as you can see, they're starting to bloom this year. When you plant something in the fall, it thinks it's the first year. And when it goes through the cold of winter and, and spring comes again, it thinks it's the second year and it starts blooming. Mm, so that's okay. why four of the five of these are starting to bloom. Now, we want to transplant these, but we need to get rid of the bloom so mm. it will stop putting energy into blooms Got and it. put it into our transplanting of the roots. Okay. So we'll just cut off all of the blooms. And that's not going to hurt the plant, Not right? going to hurt okay. the plant a bit. And I like the blooms. They're beautiful yellow They're blooms. Beautiful yeah. yellow blooms. So if we want to let them bloom later, we can. And of course, we will dig them up so we have some root system with them for transplanting. All right. There you go. All right. How about that? Looks nice, huh? Look, look, yeah, good, some, some good root system. And we're going to leave our bulbs to die down naturally. And now we got to get rid of what's left in the bed. Well, you know this is always the hard part for me, right? Well, it's but they're almost the dead. Don't they don't look that great this year. No, they don't. <laughs> it's gotten warm. So they really are not going to do any better than this. A few more. We seem to have a lot of leaves yeah, in the bed. So, and we've got to do something with these daffodils. So let's rake the leaves okay. and the debris up a little bit. Those Dusty Miller just gathered them up. Got a few of these uh, daffodils to tie up. You just want to leave them, but sometimes they get in the way, and so I usually just divide them up and give them a little knot to stay near the ground so they don't look so bothersome until they finish getting the nutrients down to their roots. So it doesn't hurt to tie them up, huh? No. The sun can get and they can make chlorophyll whether they're straight or they're tied. Well, um, we're gonna put a little fertilizer down. Okay. And because it's so dry, I hate putting new uh, plants in dry soil. So we'll sprinkle a little bit of our slow release fertilizer down. Hey, just a little bit. What did your mom say about the fertilizer? Yeah, we'll, she said feed the chickens. Feed the chickens, you feed the chickens. So we're just a, a little bit to get them started. If you put wet roots into a dry soil, it will suck the moisture out of the root system. And then your plant will wilt before it's even established. Oh. So it's just better to have the soil close to the temp to the moisture level that you're planting from in their containers. And we, we're not trying to soak this. We're just trying to add a little bit of moisture to this dry soil. We've got, we've done what is very pleasing to a lot of people. We've used the three primary colors again yeah, this year. I like that. We've got red in patients, uh, sun patients. We've got yellow sweet potato vine. Nice. And we've got blue ageratum. All right. So we'll set these out first. We've got five of them. We can plant across okay. the top of the bed. So is there a particular pattern that you like with five? Well, I like odd numbers. I know you do. And so I usually space them out according to their odd number and and I like to put the sweet potatoes in between them to fill in. And so we have five of those and we have six of these. 
So the sweet potato vines are going to spread pretty good for oh, us? Oh, they'll spread, mm -hmm. yes. And we'll see how much they spread. We'll oh, see. We'll see. We, we will, it will de we'll determine. We've never planted these in here before, so we will see <laughs> which of these likes this area better. Oh, sounds like a true trial garden, right? Yes. <laughs> and there we go. Now we'll plant these and we'll fill in with the adgeratum. Okay. You got to take the plant and squish the bottom of it and let the <laughs> plant fall out in your hand. And you look and you see, this is nicely rooted. It's not too root bound or anything. It's a little bit of spreading out of those roots and yeah. it's ready to plant. And we don't bury them in the ground either. I, I like to put the soil surface of the plant just ever so slightly higher than the existing soil. So do I'm looking at the sun patient, so is there anything we need to know about that? Is that a concern? Oh, that's, that's definitely root bound. Okay. And I'm sure when you take this off, part of that will rip off. Right. That's okay, right? Yeah, that's okay. But yeah, this is, if we had something, we need to, to stop this circling. So you just pinch off the roots and it stops that circling and it will stop circling now and want to go away from the plants. All root systems like to, to root away from a plant to anchor it. They do. And by taking that circling off, we will cause them to go out away from the plant. Is there a reason why you chose the sun patients? Yes, because we've got a lot of southern sun here. And I wanted to make sure that they would live in the, the sun that's going to be here on them. It's going to be a hot sun in the summertime. So, and sun patients do well in the sun. I think we got it. Take that out. Now that we've got this row of plants in, we're going to fill them with the other. We took away a lot of the mulch, so I would like to put a, a little bit of mulch on each side of this row and we'll just spread it around a little bit. Oh, look at that. And we don't need much. We're just kind of dressing up. Adoratum are wow. well rooted. Yeah, very well rooted. But adoratum is a well rooted annual. And okay. It does this a lot, but you know, we'll help it, of course, when we plant each one by stop that circling and squareness, and we'll plant them. All right. Each one of these will get to be about 12 inches round. So we don't have a large space mostly like um, you would find in, in front of your home. You just find a small little bed to, to look nice during the uh, summer. The adoratum can take sun and a partly sh shady area, which okay. is what we have here. So it should do fairly well. Okay. And they will get to be 12 inches round. So, wow. And so will the, uh, the New Guinea patients. So we, mean, we don't need a whole lot of plants right. to fill in this area. I always lay things out before we plant because you, it's just easier to move them with actually yeah, instead of planting yes. them first and then trying to move them. <laughs> We've got three rows now, blue on each side of the Ooh. yellow and red, and I think we're ready to plant. Think we're ready? Now since we have mulched, make sure you spread the mulch out of the way for when you dig your hole for your plant so that you can put the mulch back over the top and it will look like you were never there. Uh-huh. And somebody's probably wondering, but you're tearing up the roots. Well, mm, they've got plenty. Yeah, plenty. It actually initiates more roots when you it, it, cut roots. It does. Yeah. You we're tear doing them, them a favor. Right. There we go. We got them in. That will be pretty. That's going to be nice. Grow, little ones, grow. That'll and now nice. we'll water them in. We'll water them in. Notice I have a nice water breaker on the end of this hose. This is the kind of water breaker that you use when you have 
flowers like this. That way you're not digging holes into the plants and around the plants. You're gently putting water on as Mother Nature would with rain. And you want to make sure you soak it deeply. Once you go over it, you go back over it again. And sometimes for a new planting, I'll go over it a third time. So the water seeps down into the ground, making the uh, area wet for all of them. And it takes all the air pockets out of the soil and puts the soil up against each of the roots. And then they'll be off to a good start. All right, Joella. I can't wait to see what this is going to look like later in the season, right? It's going to be really pretty, I think. Yeah, this is exciting stuff. Thank you much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right.